Well, thanks so much for coming today and checking out the shed. It's my pleasure. So I noticed when I came through the gate, you have a fence here yep. and another fence there. Is this, this your land here? No, this, this right across the fence is actually our next door neighbors on this side. Uh, our neighbors was telling us that when they split up the property, they had to have so much square oh, footage for the, the acreage. Square foot requirements. And so they made a little L-shaped here. That's interesting. Yeah. And that must be your shed back there. Yep, this is the shed. So as you can see, uh, the shed is pretty old, especially the roof. I don't know if you saw, but there's some duct tape on the on the top of the <laughs> yeah, I didn't roof notice there. The That's, that was the main reason I wanted to get it fixed. But yeah. how else do you know when it's time to replace a, a roof? Well, first of all, like you said, the age, all right? Uh -huh. So this was uh, probably the same age as the house. Right, which was built in 98, so yeah, okay. that's over 20 years yeah, old. 20 years old, though that, the average roof life is about 20 years old, okay. unless you get a high-end shingle that could last longer. Right. Uh, but there are signs that I look for when I drive by a house. First of all, I don't look for, I ask for the age of the house. And then second, you look for granules missing on the shingles, okay. any shingles missing. Cupping is, <laughs> is definitely a sign right. that you need a roof. But the interesting thing about doing a roof on a shed like this, it's exactly the exact same steps that it, we would do in a roof on your house. Really? All the process, all the elements are all the same. So if you learn how to do it on this, it's uh -huh. going to be the same process that if we're going to do the shingle on your house. Really? Yeah, so that means if you want to shingle your roof, you can do it. <laughs> I can go out there and do it, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you want, we can get some tools and we can get started and get Let's those shingles it. off. Let's get up there. All right. Now, normally, if we were doing a house, we'd set up a staging off the back of your house. We'd have some safety nets up there, right. our roof harnesses. But we're pretty close to the ground. We're going to do most of this right from our plank here. And uh, we're just going to strip away. So All right. are, you, are you comfortable? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I like to use a four-prong pitch fork to remove the shingles. Okay. And normally, if this was a house, we'd go up in the top of the house, remove our ridge cap, and then just basically work our way down under the shingles, pull, pulling it up. But because this roof is so small, we're going to take the pitch fork. We're going to take it and pick up the edge of the shingle just like that okay. and jam it under it. Okay. Now, when I jam it under it, the idea of the four prongs, they'll go in between any nails that are there. So now when I just pick it up, break them free, come up pretty easy. That's pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. Now just take those and drop them in a nice pile down there. See the roof is wet here. Yeah, what does that mean? That means that the shingles aren't doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> Time to replace them. Right? Time to replace them. Another thing I notice is there is no underlayment between the underside of the roof shingles and the surface of the sheathing. You need that as a separation. So now we got to pull out these staples. All right, I think we're in good shape here. We'll get the shingles stripped off the other side and we're good to go. All right. Now we can replace the damaged section of the sheathing. Now that the piece is cut, I insert it into the opening and nail it off. After the roof is patched and re-nailed off, I'm installing the drip edge. First thing I want to do is cut the length for across the bottom. All right, now we'll take it and just lightly lightly push it against the building and I also want to make sure that I have a space between the back side of the drip edge to the fascia board. I don't want that touching so I like to take my fingers and stick them in there and we create that gap and that breaks the surface tension. Now I'll nail it in place. After the bottom piece is on we're going to run two pieces up each side. You didn't have those before, but it's a nice finishing look. Now you didn't have any underlayment under that roof before, and it's really good to put it there. Now this is basically a separation from the face of the sheathing to the underside of the shingle. All right, the shingles that we're gonna use is basically a standard three-tab shingle. One, okay. two, three. 36 inches long, 12 inches high. 
Now this piece right here is actually a glue section of the shingle, and that glue is activated from the sun, the heat of the sun. And the reason we have it there is so when the next row goes on, like that, the sun heats up the shingle, melts the glue, and then the wind won't blow the shingle up. Oh, okay. Now, on the layout, which we're gonna do next, I wanna make sure that we don't end up with any small pieces. So I like to center the roof shingles and then cut them equally on each side. I don't wanna have a little strip on one side and right. not on the other. All right, now we're ready to install the starter strip. So what I like to do is slip the shingle over and I'm gonna cut off all the lower tabs. Okay, now I just break them off. Get them out of my way. Now, when I take this strip, I turn it up the way it should go on the roof, bring right. it down to the drip edge. I want to bring it out about a quarter of an inch, but see where I've placed and the sticky this, strip? Yeah. Way at the bottom edge of the next shingle that's going on where it should be. Right. All right, so the next thing we want to do is start our layout. We're going to use chalk line as our reference to set our shingles on okay. in two directions, this way and this way. Okay. Okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the shingle overhangs the drip edge about 3 eighths to a half an inch. The shingle's 12 inches high. Right. So I'm going to take my tape measure. I'm going to hook it on the bottom of the drip edge, and I'm going to mark 12 minus a half an inch, because I want it to stick out a half an inch. Now the shingles are gonna have a reveal of five inches. So I'm gonna measure from the top of the shingle to the top of the next shingle, and I'm gonna mark five inches. So I'm gonna mark five, 10, 15, 20. I'll do the same thing down the other okay. end, five, 10, 15, 20, from the top of the first row of shingles. Okay. Got that? Yep. Okay, so now what we'll do is I'm gonna have you hold one end of the chalk line, okay. and you're gonna place it on that mark, that mark, and that mark, and so on down the line, all right? And we'll snap right. some lines. Yep. Now we wanna pull the line nice and tight. Okay and I'll snap it. Got it? Yep. All right, so that's the top of our shingles. There's one, and then the other one. I'm gonna pull it tight. You yep. got it? Got it. All right, so there's our vertical lines, which offsets the shingle six inches. Okay. Now, a lot of guys don't use that vertical line because you can bump the shingle against a little slot that's on the shingle to allow for that offset, but I like to use it, okay? okay? So now I'm just gonna take the shingle, lay it down, put a half inch overhang, like there, eyeball it, cut the shingle to length. Put it on the line, and there we go, just like that. Does it matter which line you start with? Or does uh, well, we're going to start with the longer shingle first, and then put our offset. Okay. Okay? So now we'll just tack that in place. Now we want to keep the nail down as close to the top of the slot that we can. Okay. Just like that. Yep. And this one we want to make sure that we stay in inbound about two inches. Okay. okay, so the next shingle, take it, flip it over. It goes on the roof like this. I flip it over. I line it up with this one like that. Right. I take my line right here. Oh, uh, now we cut the inside line. And I cut the line just like that. Okay. Flip it over. Put it on the mark. 
See, I can also take and use the tab, but I'll put it on the mark like that. Yep. Want to make sure it's on that mark right. there. I'll make it on the line here. Are you good? Yep. Okay. And then right at the top of the tab? Right at the top of the tab, just below the glue. Yep. All right. So now I'm going to take and mark the other end of the roof. Take this, flip the shingle over. I'm going to give myself that half inch overhang on the end. And here's the shingle down the bottom that I'm going to mark to get rid of this piece and now this tab right here that goes on this side of the roof is the same size of the tab that's on the other end of the roof so we are centering the roof shingles on this roof so we'll put it on the lines and nail it off Our roof is shingled, and now we're ready to make the ridge watertight. And to do that, we have to put one that's called a ridge cap. These are three tab shingles, 12 inches wide. We're actually going to cut our ridge tab out of this. That wasn't a bad day's work. No, the roof looks great. Now you know how to do a roof, so when you need a roof on your house, you can do it. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see about that, but thanks for all the lessons today. All right, let's get this stuff out of here and I can get out of your hair. All right, sounds great. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.